Hey, John, let's go to your signature message right here, and that is, how do you avoid marrying a jerk? <laughs> you wrote a book on it, so let's hear your answer. Well, I, I got to tell you, you know, um, one of my frustrations with a lot of self-help books is that they hyper-focus, you know, about two-thirds to seven-eighths of the book is about how to do it wrong, like what goes wrong, and then they just have this one little section, like the last chapter. So that book is um, at least you know, two thirds to three, seven eighths about how to do it right, what right looks like. But okay. um, can we focus on the, the negatives just yeah, for Yeah, what are the few... caution flags? What are the red flags we should be looking for in a dating relationship to avoid marrying someone who is not gonna be good for us? Well, the first one is somebody that is a habitual boundary breaker. And that could be like a player who just sees commitment as more of a source of kind of, you know, being locked in or like a source of it being entrapped rather than a source of security. So this is the person that kind of probably loves to party and marriage. Why would I be thinking about marriage? Um, it's not really that. It's about having a good time. Am I getting this right? I think so. And um, as soon as they're in that committed relationship, they start to have the wandering eye. Yeah. There's another type of boundary breaker that would be like a space invader. And um, we've talked before about narcissism and narcissists. And these people that are space invaders, like they kind of had the mentality, you know, what is mine is mine and what is yours is mine. Everything about you becomes an extension of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And Something what's the warning flag really would be uh, somebody that's unable to see, you know, life from your perspective. They, they just don't see through your eyes. They're always kind of like, having to be instructed and informed by you as to what's going on in your life because they don't ever transport out of their world into yours. The self-absorbed lack of empathy kind of thing. All right. Yeah. These are some the great third red flag. Yeah. The, yeah. the third red flag I say would be poor emotional balance. And this could go also in kind of one of two extremes. So one extreme is like an emotional volcano, somebody that is going to blow up, now, it doesn't always have to be anger. It could be any kind of emotional blow up or they could be a bottle up blow up where they go for a long time fuming, be kind of passive aggressive. But the opposite extreme is sometimes very hard to detect. And that would be like an emotional vacuum. Somebody who is just kind of emotionally vacant. They, they seem like this easygoing, wonderful person. But then as time goes on, you realize that emotions are really not woven into the fabric of their relationships. Boy, these are great points. And that's so important because you need someone that is in touch with their emotions and can articulate those emotions. It's one of the hallmarks of a healthy person. John, this is so fabulous. So just give us the three again. Number one is? The number one is the habitual boundary breaker, inability to see things through uh, your perspective, or that um, number three, they have poor emotional controls. One last thing I just say is always check out whether it's a performance or a pattern. You know, when you see good things, yeah. it might be a performance. Yeah. Make sure that the pattern is there and you give it enough time yeah. to really be able to test out these red but flags. But it's part of their character, not just an isolated event. John, this is gold. Thanks as always. Thank you, Les.